So, um, so here's one thing you see. Uh, do I have pressure meter? Hmm. I don't have pressure meter, but uh, I think for that I might need to go to um, the more sophisticated tool. Um, but I can show you one thing. Uh, I can show you with the gases how um, uh, how increase in thermal energy is connected to two other things. One, temperature, which you have seen before and nothing very surprising. And two, what it means mechanically for a gas to have more thermal energy. So let me hit this up. Um, so as I heat it up, I don't know how much I have to go. Let me just uh, go up until uh, 200 Kelvin. That's where temperature increases by a factor of like five, 10. So it's a uh, very noticeable. So um, you have the thermometer up there that's just measuring temperature. Uh, it's in Kelvin, so, so actually 150 Kelvin is very cold. 273 Kelvin is a zero degrees C, or that's where water freezes. Um, so, or with, that's where ice melts. Um, so uh, let me actually bring this up to 273 so that we can talk about this uh, neon gas or noble gas uh, at that temperature. So other than the temperature increasing, I hope you are noticing one other thing that's happening with the microscopic gas atoms. What's happening is that they're moving faster. And um, that's uh, frankly, um, um, that's uh, frankly the mechanical meaning of thermal energy. One description of thermal energy you can give is microscopic kinetic energy. So when you have these microscopic things that are moving around the faster, so they have more kinetic energy, then from the macroscopic description, we look at it and say it has more thermal energy. And we can measure that thermal energy uh, in a more direct way using a thermometer. Um, oh, oh, let me do the phase shift, actual phase shift. So when you change it from solid, as you heat it up, this is what happens. You see those vibrations happen more. So with this increase the vibration, what happens is that, so the, those molecules are bound tightly together because they have very little kinetic energy and there's a, some interaction between the atoms that's, um, so that leads to kind of a lower potential energy. It's like imagine a being an object being closer to Earth. When it's closer to Earth, it has lower potential energy. So in a solid state, it starts out with a very low potential energy. As you put in more energy, the, you are in, like putting into kinetic energy, which helps it overcome the potential energy barrier. So it's uh, um, kind of the atoms are kind of separating from each other. So they have less potential energy, more kinetic energy. This is liquid state. And as you heat it up more, it has more and more kinetic energy. At some point, it has enough kinetic energy that atoms can be unbound from each other. So the attraction between them is small compared to, or the potential energy associated with the attraction between them is much smaller compared to the kinetic energy. That's when you get the gas stage. Um, so, all right, uh, let me, uh, so I think to talk about, the uh, change in the um, thermal energy and pressure, I think I need to go to the other tool. Uh, so this is uh, what I want you to see. So let me first uh, turn this argon into gas. Um, and then we'll talk. <laughs> All right, so it says, um, uh, it's at, well, freezing temperature, 273 Kelvin, but argon is a noble gas. There's much less attraction between them than water does. So it's already a gas phase. And this is what I want you to know this um, and why I needed this, something that had, was measuring pressure. So right now, uh, it, there's a pressure built up in this vessel. And according to the measurement of this pressure meter or barometer is making, it's at about 30, uh, let's call it 30. 30 atmosphere. One atmosphere is pressure equal to that exerted by gas in atmosphere. Um, so it's uh, 30 times that, which I guess I'll just have to take it word for it. 
And um, you can increase the pressure of this vessel in different ways. Um, one way is to just uh, apply more pressure, push it down, that will increase pressure. Um, and the second way is you can add more heat. So let me go from 273 Kelvin um, and about 30 atmosphere to let me just double the temperature. Let's go to 500 Kelvin. So let me just up this up, um, heat this up to 500 Kelvin. Then I want you to look at what happens to pressure. And I hope to explain that in a couple of minutes when I'm at 500 Kelvin. So when I am at 500 Kelvin, this is what you see. So you see the argon atoms bouncing around more. So they are moving faster. And that's somehow leading to an increase in pressure. So you might ask, how is it doing that? And you can understand this in terms of momentum and impulse. Each time these molecules bounce off of the surface, it's uh, imparting momentum. It's uh, applying, it's, it's transgiving impulse to the wall. That impulse transfer is happening over uh, some fixed amount of time. So when you get that impulse divided by time to give you rate of change of momentum, that's the definition of force. So there's a force on this top surface that you can base on the transfer of momentum, which represents a force being applied. And when you take that amount of force, divide, the, divide out the area, that's when you get pressure. Pressure is force over area. So what this has shown is that as these argon molecules are bouncing around, uh, as they collide with the surface, it's uh, imparting some momentum, which um, becomes a uh, kind of force on that plane. And um, can you see why that force, hence pressure, should be increasing? I hope you can. And the reason is that if uh, these balls are moving faster, then it's uh, imparting greater amount of momentum in the same amount of time. And actually, it, uh, it also becomes a shorter amount of time because the rate of uh, frequency at which it collides also increases. So in a class like a Physics 4A, I actually do this derivation. It's a lot of fun. For Physics 10, I just want you to have that intuition that um, when you hit something up, or okay, not something, <laughs> when you hit up a gas, the pressure increases because of this consideration of collisions which will involve momentum change, which will be tied to uh, force applied, which can be tied to um, pressure exerted over a surface. Okay, uh, so you have that. Uh, let me cool this down so that next time I do something, it doesn't break the simulation. It has done that before. I think the biggest problem is that it doesn't have, it doesn't simulate enough number of gas molecules. So it's going to run into numerical issues. Um, it's, uh, by the way, one of the reasons why the, um, the pressure fluctuates so much. Um, the, when you actually measure real pressure in real gas, it's usually like stable in a part in 10,000 or something. Um, <laughs> the reason this is fluctuating so much is because what we are simulating here, so much is smaller by fraction by uh, to a gas, amount of gas in an actual room that so much smaller that there's no real, uh, uh, no real uh, 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 SI prefix for it. So I think it's like 10 to minus 20. Um, so anyways, so here's one other way you can increase pressure and that's to press it in. So as I press it in, you will see that pressure goes up and part of that is, well, I'm applying force. So, um, so yeah, of course pressure goes up. But here's one other weird thing. You can see that as I pressed it down, the temperature went up. How come, why, what's going on? And as I pull this back up, you see temperature going down and the pressure going back down. <laughs> what's, what's up? Um, and uh, I just want to leave with that this is the kind of introduction to thermodynamics. It's how work being done 
by force being applied over a distance turns into thermal energy. And how when the gas does work on the lid, that energy, the work being done on the lid, comes out of um, comes out of the thermal energy. That's the thermodynamics part. That's the part you're going to get to in the second part of chapter nine. So uh, let me continue on with the remainder of the um, introduction to uh, background material for thermodynamics.